Hey there everybody, this is Spiraling Helix and welcome to my new LP, or old, depending on what year you're watching this in. Welcome to Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, which is very different from the rest of the franchise, but it's a 3D platformer essentially. So let's get right into it. I'm pretty sure the options are how I want, so let's find out. All my camera angles are wrong and never how I have them and get straight into the game with some cutscenes of course. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go, Misty Island. That's right, and then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man, are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? 
There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Karl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark gooey eco stuff, will we? Cause I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! And welcome to the gameplay! And the cameras aren't how I want to- I knew it would mess me up somehow. Every single time. Flip, and I'll flip that one too. Just cause that might change something. Anyway, we can punch, we can spin, Kira's saying something, but oh well. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. So these are pretty much like the bulk collectible. They're not the most important one, we'll be seeing them in a moment. Just up there, you can already see it. But these ones help you get more of those ones there. You can do various attacks, you can... This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-Grab Zoomer. Thank you, Kira. Anyway... Those cutscenes are the best! And they're pretty hilarious too. Um, yes, that's fine. Auto-saving, yay, starting a new file. In these red boxes, as Kira is explaining, there are some scout flies. There are seven in each area, and collecting all of them will reveal a power cell for our troubles. Each area also has, like, a number of precursor orbs. They don't respawn, they're not quite like coins in the Mario games. It's more like... I don't know actually, what would you call them? They're like the music notes from Banjo-Kazooie, I guess? Similar to that. Anyway, I think I want to fall down... No, I want to go up here a bit more. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Now, Blue Eco is by far the best of the coloured Ecos. There are many colours in this game. I'm gonna jump down here next, as there are a few things down here. Now, Blue Eco, it's good and amazing because, one, it makes you move fast, but two, it also breaks these boxes around you, including the Scout Fly boxes, I believe. And it will g attract tons of... Precursor orbs to you as well. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. And yeah, any time you see that blue electric symbol, that's how you know if there is some kind of precursor junk that gets activated with blue eco. And as opposed to those small balls, I know they're just saying this now, but I'm gonna say it. Because I was already talking, Kira. As opposed to the small orbs of Eco, these will 
give you a full Lee Code charge, as you can see in the bottom right. Which allows you to have even more and go faster for longer and stuff. And you might have also seen us picking up little bits of green eco. Which you've, like, you, it would have been in those boxes that we were breaking earlier. And the green eco is actually your health in the top left, you can see it there. The green eco, 50 units, and he's just going to mention it now, isn't he? Ah! Oh. I'm talking about this. 50 units is one unit of health. You get three hits. However, if you gather up 50 small green eco piece thingy things, particles, whatever you call them. And let's make sure I didn't miss any. It's easy to miss a few precursor orbs there. If you collect 50, as you can see, you'll keep those 50. So if I was to get hurt, like so, it will automatically refill that piece of health. And then just let me collect 50 again. And that's every precursor orb. And this is the last. Power cell. I think? Hold on a minute. Yes, four. Cool. And if you should ever want to check if there's anything you missed, just give the game a quick pause. You can check the power cells. A few of them will get, get revealed. So, for example, this one was probably revealed when... Oh man, Samos was talking about the door. However, a lot of them are just straight up hidden until you collect them. You can see how many there are. The scout flies, of course, on your right. And the precursor orbs are also there. 2,000 in total, that's a lot. But let's head back to Old Man Samos and Kira. And yes, the only place I can. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Okay, Samus. Fine, I'll get out of here. But before I do, I want to show you. Uh, it's really hard from this angle. Come on, come on. Maybe from here. Right. Samus actually has tiny little eyes. And the glasses just make him big. It's hilarious. Anyway, though. Samus is the green eco saint. There are other eco saintlers, but if we jump down here, as opposed to taking the steps, here is Kira's garage. Hey, baby. What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-grab zoomer? Rule number one: I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Listen, if you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. And... Basically talking to any villager as we are in Sandover Village. Talking to any person or NPC or any of that will usually result in them wanting you to do something in order to get a power cell but also do like something else. Like Kira mentioned, somewhere over by the Forbidden Temple in that direction, there is likely to be some way to activate the blue eco vents. And if you have a keen eye, you probably would have noticed that what the eco vent that was closed off was down here uh, in along Sentinel Beach. I'm not going to go this way yet because I think I want to open that green, the blue eco vent before I head down to Sentinel Beach. So we're going to ignore Old Man Samos 
and go towards the Forbidden Temple area in the forest and stuff before that. But first of all, let's just wander around the village, see what there is to offer. And I'm gonna keep, like, I won't talk to the villagers unless they say anything important to the area we'll be visiting next. I believe that's not a villager, that's just another scout fly. You can hear the scout flies when they are close, although I won't be able to. You do have something important. Don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The, the first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boys? See them? See how they're not moving? That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. And boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah, hmm? Oh, you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, and, and another thing, if by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is, a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. So each NPC will usually have two things, like I just kind of mentioned, but they will also, like pretty much always, want 90 precursor orbs off you in return for a power cell. I don't have 90 precursor orbs, so he will have to wait. But if I head down this way, I don't think there's any other villagers I really wanted to talk to, at least not until I get 90 power cells. Not power cells, precursor orbs. I'm gonna do that so many times. Anyway, so one of these weird lightning things in the ground will house a ton of precursor orbs. I'm just gonna call them power orbs at one point, like seriously. And break this, just a couple more scout flies. And I want to hit these Yakows, I believe they're called, over into a pen in this direction. The guy over in front of that building there is like, Oh, my Yakows are not going into the pen, and it's feeding time, and I'm tired, and I want to go to bed and stuff. So let's just ignore talking to him. As great as the characters are in these games, I think... I'd want to keep things moving just because we will talk to him immediately again. Any other character I probably won't skip over dial- Where are you going? I probably won't skip over dialogue. It's just because we'd be talking to him immediately again. And that way please. And it's- Wow, it's, it's surprisingly hard to steer these creatures. Forward! Mush! Wait, where are you going? You were in! You were in the pen! Get in there! And can I do an uppercut? Uppercut! Ah, oh, I missed. Anyway, get in there! That lazy farmer owes us a power cell! Let's go talk to him! So you can actually turn off those voices when you're not in cutscenes. Done, my boy, you actually got those flea bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power cell for your trouble. Yeah! Anyway, as I was saying, you can actually turn off the voices in between cutscenes like that. And that also skips over a lot of those moments where you lose control in Geyser Rock by going into settings and turning off the hints. But it's kind of funny just hearing the voices like Daxter talking like that and like it's just I wouldn't want to s turn those off. It's actually the first game I've probably ever played and I can't think of any other game at the moment where I'd want to keep the hints on which is a bit of a surprise but I'm gonna make my way back up these rocks. There we 
we go! Now that is a long jump, but right over here is the last scout fly giving us a power cell for our efforts. And right over here we have this creepy looking glowing face. Let's see what he has to say. Who awakens the oracle? Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. This must be a precursor oracle like the sage always goes on about. I hope they weren't as ugly! He just wants more precursor orbs, too forcey for both of them. But let's still grab a few more precursor orbs over by the entrance to the Forbidden Jungle. Which we will explore in the next episode. That's pretty much all of Sandover Village, minus a small bit. But that temple over there, that is our next target where we will unlock some blue eco vents. Thanks to Kira's knowledge. And with that guys, this has been Spiraling Helix. I will see you next time. Bye bye.